Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we are trying again. We had a false start here a few minutes ago, but um, welcome to a new um, unfiltered, unfiltered NSL live talk. And my guests today are from the Netherlands, out of the blue. Here they are. Hello. Out of the blue came the coronavirus. How you guys are he healthy and happy here? Uh, oh, there, how's it going? Everybody. We're healthy, happier if we could do some jumps, but we're patient. Yes. Well, let, let's do a quick introduc introduction for, um, for the audience because, you know, everybody knows who um, out of the blue is by now. But in person, um, you know, I don't know if everybody really knows that. So start, let's start from uh, top left here, which is Bert is the first victim. Please let us know who you are. <laughs> Uh, I started skydiving uh, in 2007. I think I have about 3,500-ish jumps and doing various teams in four-way and eight-way and in the end I ended up with Out of the Blue, the Dutch team, first as a camera guy and now as an outside center. So I'm pretty happy with the uh, with the path I took already, and I'm I'm really happy to be on uh, on this team, made it to this team because uh, this is one of the best things uh, I've done so far. It's a great let opportunity. Stick, let me stick with you for for a minute. Um, only usually only the Golden Knights are doing this, um, moving their videographer into the active lineup. How how did this happen to you? Uh, I actually, um, I always um, was a, a competitor, no camera jumper, and when the team came to be, um, uh, they selected Dutch uh, competitors, and because I'm Belgian national, I uh, was put on camera, because I, at first they thought it was, it was going to be okay, and then afterwards, uh, uh, we moved to Holland, and then as an inhabitant of the Netherlands, I was able to do the camera or the competitor. I think Leon is a better camera guy, so uh, they, they promoted me <laughs> out of the camera slot. <laughs> We're getting to the guys on the bottom in a moment. So <laughs> Let's see on the top first, uh, Mandy. Who are you? Yes, I am Mandy. I started skydiving in 2012 together with my uh, my former teammate uh, Ralph. So um, we started together, and uh, we started uh, right away actually a team. Um, of course, in the rookie, um, we we were there together till double A, and then we did one year of eight way between. And then we, uh, yeah, we joined a project, so our uh, our ways split it up. Uh, I came in out of the blue, but it was uh, with Leon, Maggie, and Danny in the in the beginning. And yeah, in the meanwhile, we changed, and uh, this is the team now for the future. So uh, and during my trip, I am now two years in the board of uh, Skydive Flanders. And I'm also in the board of the Federation of Belgium. So um, we started in, in Belgium uh, in the beginning. So that's Are you the IPC delegate? No, the IPC delegate is Mike Pennock, right? For it's, uh, in, it's in the Netherlands. Mike Pennock is uh, part of the Federation in the Netherlands and I am part of the Federation in Belgium. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, you mentioned Ralph earlier that you uh, began together. So let's move, go to the bottom right first. There's Ralph. Um, how do you say your last name? Peinenberg. 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 That's easy for me. You know, it's with German. That's uh, like a German word. Peinenberg. So you started together with Mandy. Yeah, I started together in 2012 with Mandy. And what he already was saying is... Uh, we very quick started a team together with uh, Jeff and Davio and DJ as camera guy. And we did that two years, three? Three years, yeah. Three years. And 
yeah, after that, so what you're saying is uh, we uh, did a eight way, and then I also uh, tried to come in a project, the, the Dutch project, but uh, I they didn't invite me. Uh, I'm saying. The, the project or the team? The team invited you eventually to join. No, yeah, the the project. I was uh, on the side of okay. the project. We started uh, in, uh, a team with uh, Bart, uh, Rick, and uh, Paul. That was team white. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, I went in the project and. And Paul helped us with the coaching, and uh, we trained every every week, two weeks, uh, an half hour in the tunnel. And our goal was to come in a project with the uh, um, how do you say it? Uh, also for outdoor, for outdoor also, yeah. Also for outdoor, yes. There is actually, a, the, they, actually, the team of Ralph, the, uh, it was an indoor team for a year before he was selected for Auto Blue. And we needed, actually, I need to say, they beat us indoor. So our, our own cameraman was, was a part of the indoor team with Ralph, Paul Hofste and uh, Rick. And they beat it. They beat it out of the blue. There, there seems to be a lot of overlapping between Belgium and Netherlands and Germany, you know, the Benelux and, and other neighboring countries. You know, Paul is in Germany now and Belgium, yes. Netherlands, so um, that is coming naturally, I guess, because those countries are really so close as of language and, and geography and all that. But let, let's go to, to the bottom left now. And we have Meshi and Leon there. And you know each other forever. <laughs> <laughs> we also jump forever because we're, we're the old guys in the team. So thank you. <laughs> Especially but, Leon. <laughs> yeah, tell us, tell us a story, the, the age and the number and the years oh, and all of that. Also. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Uh, I started 2002 with Skydiving and after two years, Maggie asked me to go in a four-way team uh, for do some competition and we were in, in team whoops, whoops uh, with the three O's and uh, we stay very long uh, in, in the team. There were uh, a few new members sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, I think we jumped till 2014 or 15. Yeah. And we did uh, also international competition and that kind of thing. So it was really, really good. Also, I did with the Matrix. I was an 8-way from uh, the Dutch uh, national team. And uh, we make uh, really, really nice uh, seasons with. Uh, also with Gary Schmidt in it, so it was uh, uh, for me that was the, the top level. Uh, uh, whoops! It was it was a very. I think the best we did is in the 15 average or something. 15 eight. 15 eight, and uh, but uh, on the eight way we did it in in a very short time. We did a little bit better. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what the average was like. 12, some, 14 something? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. But after that, uh, I also came in the Dutch project in Team Blue and uh, they asked me for my experience, I think, <laughs> because the average is high. I, I'm uh, uh, 54 and uh, yeah. Your age is high. My, uh, yeah. my age is high. And so after uh, one season, they skipped me and uh, changed me for uh, yeah, ball was in my place and then was one season for no skydive no competition skydive for me i also do on my club on the south uh, some uh, i do uh, give some courses for students i do some tandems but uh, after one season i was happy they asked me back for a camera guy so i like it uh, to do competition again uh, it's on the uh, above the team but it's uh, very nice to feel the, uh, the things in, in the far away. And uh, it's, for me, it's a new thing. And I hope I can keep uh, a few years uh, by the team. Well, usually the experience is when, if, if you have been a competitor first and then go to camera, 
you're doing pretty well usually. So you know that's uh, it's it's an easier move than the other way around usually. Yeah, there's one team more. They change uh, a player from the team to camera. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Aya Buja or something? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> team, Belgium, something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a good example eh, from uh, Team Lula uh, out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Messi. Yeah. Oh, Hi, Messi. Uh, yeah, started skydiving at, uh, in 2000. Um, and about five and a half thousand jumps now or something. And like Leon said, uh, after some years, we started the Team Whoops and our first international competition was in 2011 in Germany. Uh, was uh, Saint Louis. Saint Louis, yeah. yeah, and the year after we went to uh, uh, Dubai. So there our, uh, we started and um, ever since we've been in the national team in, in Whoops or in Matrix, the 8th way, and in Matrix, the four-way, we did that uh, simultaneously with the eight-way. So that was very nice. Um, but everybody gets a little bit older and uh, uh, we were still hungry for more. <laughs> so, and then this, this project started in the Netherlands and um, there was, you couldn't, um, join as a team only as individual members so we we joined and uh we came in the team with with mandy uh and then with uh danny and hey, after a year it switched it switched a little bit around and rick was in the team and then leon was out and ralph was in the team and Bart was the cameraman and and but that the project stopped so um yeah, we made our own team with <laughs> everybody together, and this is now uh, how it is. And I'm, uh, I must say, I've, uh, uh, I'm very happy with uh, uh, the people I'm in the team. And they were a little bit younger. <laughs> sometimes I'm thinking, you, you, you call this music, you know, what's up with that, and things, things like that. But okay. It's not about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> it. It is funny. My kids love the the, the rock music from the 70s, 80s. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's... Um, Lucky you. Lucky you. Not these kids. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they hear other stuff too, of course, but they appreciate still, you know, the, the older stuff. Interesting. Yeah. They're teenagers, yeah. you know, so... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but... Well, but um, they're not teenagers anymore. Eh? Even Mandy is now 30. So. Uh oh, we heard <laughs> it. We heard it. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so right now, the, the team is, I guess, when it was a project uh, FS 2020 uh, 20 or uh, 2020, 21, 22, you know, whatever it was, um, mm -hmm. you had some kind of management there. Um, you know, I don't know to what extent, but now you're totally self-organized, self-managed and all that. It's just yeah. a team without a project. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, within the project, we weren't allowed to choose our own team members. And, um, and now we are, of course. And um, I'm, I um, know you can't always be friends. Uh, to be in a team, you also have to have the same goal, but just having the same goal isn't sometimes enough. And um, and I think we have a very good, strong mix now with friendship and having the same goal. And some people have uh, more extreme experience, and <laughs> some people are better in other stuff. And so I think it's uh, the perfect mix, actually. Well, it sounds great, especially coming from you, Meshi, because, um, you know, looking back, I think you have been on every Dutch team, you know, I mean, it started with whoops, but almost on every Dutch team that has been there on any international meet, Meshi, yeah. you know, Leon close to it, but um, so coming coming from you, there's a lot of team experience, you know, and, and uh, feeling happy um, about with what you have now that, you know, that's, that's a good thing. Um, did we ever have an NSL um, a talk with Whoops? I mean, I, 
I, I was yeah. trying to think about it earlier. Now, did we ever have, I know nothing with Out of the Blue, but I think with yeah, Whoops, we... we and Maurits, with Peter Maurits, we were training in uh, D-Land, and we went to your uh, little, uh, <laughs> yeah, office. you say office, yeah? Office? Uh, also to buy some gloves, of course, yeah, uh, white okay. and gloves. And then we had a little, uh, uh, yeah, interview. I have, I have to find that, so I'm going to look that up. So it was with whoops. So, okay. Yeah, with Maurits and and. Uh, so yeah. what what is going on with an A track? Um, I sometimes I hear little things about the S eight way is still happening, but they're not, and then maybe and are there is there still a Dutch eight way team? A little bit, a little bit. Yes, yeah, some voices there. Some. Okay. But, Sorry. Uh, Can you start I'm again, Leon? Flying, I'm also flying in the uh, indoor team uh, with Leander uh, van Schriek and with Annelies, uh, the woman uh, from uh, Sven, and with Jaap Keuter. And they're also a member in uh, Matrix. And uh, it's very difficult to. Uh, uh, play in three teams now. Yeah. Also for, uh, for Jaap and that, uh, people who share uh, some teams. And we did it last year and we planned some training gyms. But when we have one time bad weather, hey, we can't uh, make uh, some training gyms and there's uh, not enough competition uh, for us to keep that uh, <laughs> alive. Yeah. So it's more, it's a choice also from out of the blue to uh, keep focus on one. Uh, big target and that's the four-way yeah so we don't know yet if there will be a dutch eight-way team um you know in tanai or not that's uh, kind of an open thing or? Yeah. actually i don't think so yeah okay, of course we we won the nationals because all of the out of the blue members are also in uh, matrix the eight-way and uh, we changed some slots and now <laughs> All five of us is also in the eight way, <laughs> and uh, we love doing eight way. But also, uh, you only have so much money and so much time, so you have to uh, really make a, a choices in what you what you can do. And so, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just wondering. No, no. Um, I cannot believe you know we are only not running out of time yet, but the history of the team is so interesting and so many different angles that we you know we have been spending already <laughs> a good amount of time. Let's talk about something contemporary, which is the coronavirus. Actually, we haven't even talked a word about this yet, even though it's it's out there changing the world. Um, when did you when did um, when did uh, out of the blue actually? make the last jump, training jump, comp what was your last competition? Well, you were at the Wind Games, right? Last competition was the Wind Games indoor, yes. So that and was the last game. team activity too, I guess? Yes. No, we, uh, before the Coming. lockdown, we uh, still had uh, one uh, training session uh, indoor to fly, uh, to test out the new suits, but then the, the lockdown came and <laughs> Ever since we're, we're stuck at home, so at so least the last, we have to fly the new suits one more time. Yeah, so the last outdoor jump was probably sometime the last year? The yeah. national for the last, was the last competition. Se September. Yeah. Was it the, the, the nationals? I didn't hear the first one, sorry. Um, the nationals, your yeah, national the national championship. Oh. Yeah, so that last October, December, January, February, March. That's how you can go. How does that feel like? Is are you nervous kind of? You know, I'm. Are you are, are you kind of um, a, a cold turkey about missing adrenaline or whatever? <laughs> Ralph, how does it feel? How does it feel without jumping? Yeah, it's hard to get used to because normally we had uh, all the free time we had from work was uh, spent into skydiving and, and training and now it all really fell through. So it's, it's definitely an adjustment, I think. 
and, yeah. and when it's safe again to reopen all the drop zones and, and resume training, depending on when that will be this season, we still hope to, to make it a little bit of a, not a complete off season. But once it starts again, we will have to, to see what is still possible to do. How far away from be, um, reopening or whatever you would call that do you think you are in the Netherlands? What is the current situation? I mean, are you still in lockdown, um, social distancing and, um, you know, all of that? What, what, how, is it, how is Netherlands dealing with that? Since like one or two weeks, the wind tunnels are opening a little bit, but we're not allowed to do any four-way in them. Just allowed to just fly with two people in the wind tunnel, not more. So we can't start training yet. Uh, perhaps in June, it's going to be a little bit better, but it's very uncertain. And so the same with the outdoor, perhaps in June, but it's going to have a lot of uh, restrictions. If if we are allowed to uh, open again. Um, so in training, it's, yeah, we still have to see what's possible and what's allowed. And um, if we want to train in certain circumstances, because of course we miss the jumping, but we also want to think of our health and uh, the health of our families and friends. So it's, yeah, it's, it's still uncertain. We, we don't know. Yeah open open for everybody so no no big difference uh, even though europe seems to be a little bit stricter about everything than the united states seem to be you know more more open already by now <clears throat> interesting um and um so what um what would have been your activities without corona you probably would have been i mean wind games you did so what was plan to be next on the agenda which meets and training the, the world cup uh, we would ah we would have joined the the world cup mm -hmm. in uh, in Charleroi. um yeah that came that would be in april and we would have start outdoor after uh, we completed this competition so normally we would have uh, started in may uh, we would have been four days of training at this moment um, and the plan was to, to make around 200 jumps, I think, uh, till uh, till Tanai. And in the meanwhile, we would have joined uh, the Tomska Trophy and, of course, uh, the Nationals. But it would be uh, would have been after Tanai. So now that is all cancelled. Tomska probably cancelled. Nationals cancelled already, or is it still open? The Nationals are they are still talking about. Uh, to organize or not, and we will. We spoke with the federation about uh, the rescheduled Tanai, if we would uh, be um, participating in two, uh, 2021. So, and the net, yeah, the federation is still not. They didn't decide yet if the nationals will be in September or not. So we Point will do this at the end of June. June. Have they decided yet, the, the Dutch Federation, whether the, this year's nationals would then be qualification for next year or um, are you already qualified for next year no matter what? We are already qualified. You are, okay. But uh, if they have the, the possibility to uh, organize the, the nationals this year uh, safely, it wouldn't count as a uh, qualifying event, but they would have liked the, all the qualified teams to join the nationals, of course. Mm -hmm. But depending on whether training and preparing for the nationals is possible, I think in the future we will see if it's still a go or not. So it's, we don't have to qualify anymore, but they still would like us to join. And of course, we would like to join as well, yeah, if at all possible. And uh, the Tom's cat would be next month already, right? So that's such a um, big uh, traditional event that's probably uh, really sad that this is also falling falling away and you cannot really reschedule that because it's happening every year anyway right so next year there will be a new time scat. yeah so it's always in the first weekend of july so yeah it will be very mm -hmm. soon and i think I, I i don't think they already decided or they they 
announced that it will be rescheduled, but uh, I think it will. Well, they rescheduled the World Cup, the Indoor World Cup at least. So that is still open at this point in time. You know, that is scheduled for October. How far is it from, from your home there in the Netherlands, Charua? The driving uh, distance? One hour drive. One hour drive. Wow, that's convenient. Yeah. So that, Very that's good. Yeah. And um, so now you have to, like many other teams or like every, almost almost every team, you know, you don't have to, but um, all of a sudden an additional year until the world meet has come up to anybody. You know, you may not have had a plan to, to be a team member until 2021. Now you are. <laughs> everybody happy about it, I'm hoping. Yes. Was it difficult to make a de the decision to just, I mean, a year is, a, you know, that's a, it's a long time. All of a sudden, you know, the, the team commitment is a year longer. <laughs> Actually, that's a, that, that discussion didn't even come up. We just, oh, we just Okay, then it's a year later. Yeah, we never even discussed it. Should we continue or not? So, yeah, okay. we just do. <laughs> well, I got my warning here now. So, I... Um, so it's a it's a Friday night over there, right? What would you normally do on a Friday night? <laughs> so we should, uh, be on the restaurant, I think, together after uh, twelve jumps. Driving our little drop zone. Yeah. And normally do, how, we drive how far away are you? To the drop zone. How far away are you from each other? Uh, uh, within an hour's drive, I think. Between, I mean, the furthest distance between team members is like about an hour. Yes, and, about, to the, yes. and to the drop yeah. zone. Which drop zone is it? Where are you jumping? Depending. Mosele. Normally we train in uh, skydive Flanders Mosele. So yeah. usually uh, the Friday would be, uh, the weekend would be um, a training weekend. So then on Friday, maybe the Friday, but on Friday you would travel to um, to the drop zone and have a beer and get ready for, you have your trailer or something or tent out there at the drop zone and then, or stay at a bed and breakfast place and then be ready yes. for Saturday morning. Is that what would usually happen? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. On the, especially this uh, weekend, we would have been jumping also from last Thursday. So we would be jumping for four days. So we would have been there already. And uh, normally we travel on Friday evening to a drop zone, so yeah. And then sitting at the drop zone bar or somewhere and having, now outside probably at the picnic table, enjoying the beautiful weather and having a beer together, you know, we had, how long, uh, that's like a half year ago, right? Or ages ago, yeah. ages ago. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we haven't seen each other only through Skype, so, yeah. Well, tonight, so tonight will be a Skype night and a beer at home. Um, yeah. And Okay, well, enjoy it. I've, it's a little bit early here for me to uh, share a beer with you, but, um, you know, you can do it. It's still early for you. It's a little early. You know, there's no reason why you cannot have a beer at noon, but, um, or in the early afternoon, but... <laughs> It is a little early for me, but at least our we have a little brew pub here in the land, and um, I think they're open again too because all the restaurants um, are, are open again. Limited, I mean, the smaller capacities, but they're open at least. Okay. Well, anyhow, good luck with everything, and I'm Thank hoping um, that things will be under control and normal soon for you. Half mm -hmm. a year is a long time, you know, if you're a team. A skydiving team that that's a long time without it but uh, we have a we have a plan if uh, if they don't open the drop zone soon I... then we're gonna we're gonna um, we made a new prototype of helmet i'm losing and, you uh, again <laughs> we made a new prototype of helmets i have uh, nothing anymore sorry guys <laughs> let's just let's just wave goodbye. I don't hear you anymore. So it looks like the same, similar thing is happening. So goodbye. Thank you very much for everything. Good luck. And I'm Thank sorry you. that it's such a 
ending, but at least we can see each other now, even if we cannot hear each other. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.